Ghanaians are the friendliest people you'll meet on earth, really. People say Africans are friendly. Ghana is sort of the epitome of friendly Africa. There was this saying that if you really want to experience Africa, you have to visit Africa and experience Africa for yourself. And this video exemplifies it. This is an American missionary who visited Ghana in 2018 and he's excitingly or happily sharing his experience in Ghana, especially with the people of Ashanti region. So he's basically talking about um, how he felt in Ghana, our food, our culture, our way of life, and how Ghanaians are very hospitable. I would like you to pay attention to whatever he said in the video. And at the end of the video, you'll be able to tell whether the lies that they peddle about Africa or Ghanaians are really true. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ambassador Vix. Let us move. Ghana is so different from home. And animals everywhere and just farmland and jungles and palm trees and the beach and everything was just very different. We got on the bus. I remember being so tired but I couldn't sleep because just looking out the window and seeing everything and we were just driving from village to village. But like in between villages was just dense jungle. <laughs> like you couldn't see very far. It's just trees and trees and trees and bushes and so now he's sharing his experience when he got down from the plane and moving to Kumasi. Uh, it was sort of intense feeling. I remember one of my first funny cultural experiences was when the bus stopped for a bathroom break. And I had to go really bad, but everyone just got off the bus and they just started going to the bathroom right off the side of the road. It is not really our bathroom, but it is the bathroom that we use anytime that we are traveling. I mean, that's a convenient place that you're supposed to, you know. Ease yourself anytime that you feel you feel like easing yourself. Yeah, that's not really our bathroom. And I remember being so scared and thinking like, whoa, that's not okay. So I, I held it because I was so nervous and scared to go. I didn't understand what was going on and it was it was kind of freaky. Not knowing though that that's just what you do. You just go to the bathroom outside, which was really hard for me at first. <laughs> that was a funny experience I had um, the first day. But uh, when we got to, the, to Kumasi, we got there about probably about seven or eight in the evening and so it was already dark outside and I remember we had to charter a taxi to get to our apartment and it was really nerve-wracking because it's just these ghetto taxis yeah you know in Kumasi some of the taxis are very old some of the taxis are very old unlike Tapapwe most of the taxis are really new but in Kumasi the taxis are really old so I mean I could buy with what you're saying and there's no set prices on anything and so you just have to barter with everybody on everything and so I remember sitting there listening to my trainer barter with the taxi driver and just thinking like, whoa, I can never do that. <laughs> I, it was really um, nerve wracking. So their food is really different from ours. Um, I think the only food that we share is rice. <laughs> That's probably about the only thing that we have in common as far as food is concerned. In Ghana, they sort of have staple foods that everyone eats every day. The first one is rice. Um, the second one uh, that they eat a lot is called fufu and fufu is uh, it's a mix uh, with cassava and plantains. In Ghana, most of our foods will be rice, fufu, bangkun and apesi. I don't know and I don't know of any stable food again. Bangkun, rice, fufu and um, apesi. Yeah. TZ is, you know, closer to Banco. Yeah. Which are two sort of unfamiliar things here in the United States. Most people know what a plantain is. It's those green bananas that you see at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, and I know you people don't have our food in the United States. So, but also the Africans who are living in the Western world. Um, we have the African market. So they go to the African market and buy the stuff. So if you are a white person watching me right now and you like to enjoy our food, just look at the Ghanaian African who knows how to prepare for food. And they will, they will sort you out, yeah, they'll sort you out. They normally have plantains, but uh, a cassava is a root plant. Um, it's kind of like a potato, but not really. <laughs> it's hard to explain, we just don't have it here. But what they do to make fufu is they boil the plantain in the cassava in a big pot, and then they pound it. So they have, a, they have what's called a mortar and a pistol. Mortar and piston, I mean. So it's like this wooden, this big wooden bowl. One thing I like about him is he's giving a vivid explanation, detailed explanation to our foods, our culture, and the things that he experienced. I like that thing about him. Like a base. 
and then a long wooden stick that's like the wood on one end is like um, pounded in like I don't know how to explain it <laughs> but so afterwards when it's really hot they'll put the the plantain in the bowl in the wooden base and then the men will pound it and they'll pound it and they'll keep adding pieces and they pound it and pound it and pound it this contemporary Ghana most people are using native fufu or they, have, they blend the cassava and the plantain and they use them to prepare the fufu so that is an alternative to using the mortar and the pestle so just blend um, the the cassava and the plantain in making your fufu when they finish it's sort of like it looks like bread dough a little bit sort of that color of like a creamy color sometimes like a little bit of brownish color tan I guess you could say and uh, that's their favorite that's like Ghana's favorite food every day you'll hear pounding every time of day all day you'll hear, you'll hear pounding because they love their fufu most people eat fufu but personally I, I don't enjoy fufu but most people in Ghana really like fufu yeah. and what they do is uh, they pour soup on it and you eat it with your hands and you use your fingers you use your fingers kind of like scissors and you you cut a little ball off of the big lump you dip it in the soup and you put it in your mouth and you just swallow it you don't chew if you chew they'll get mad at you because it's like not it's not good manners to chew fufu so you swallow it whole and the first time you eat fufu you'll you'll gag but uh yeah, the first time I ate fufu, I gagged. I almost threw up. I actually did throw up in my mouth. And then I, I didn't want to make them feel bad, so I just swallowed it again. And I just kept eating. But I didn't finish my lump. It was pretty bad. Even though I, I ended up loving it. I, I don't think so that the first time you eat fufu, you gag. But I mean, it is um, personal to each and every one. Me personally, I've not even eaten fufu before, so I don't know what you're talking about. But they have a lot of different ethnic foods. They have one that's called banku. And banku is... a uh, that same cassava plant, but they grind it and they dry it out. And then they, once it's all dry, then they add hot water to it and they stir it in this big metal pot. And they, they stir it like this, like they push it up against the metal pot towards themselves. And it sort of looks like fufu a little bit, but it's white. And it's a little bit more sticky than fufu is. And it's the same thing now, you dip it in soup or stew and you swallow it whole. And banku is a little bit harder for new missionaries than fufu because it has a sort of a sour taste. Because when while the cassava is drying, it becomes a little bit like fermented. And so it has a little bit of a sour taste. It's better to swallow it though. Because if you try to chew it, you'll really get that sour taste a lot more. But if you just swallow it and get it over with, then you won't taste it as much. <laughs> Banku is my favorite. I think when I interviewed Chess and Chance, they also gave a comment about, you know, our fufu. It's really good. It's really good, yeah. Here's, here's a word they use that we don't use. We have peanuts, but they call them ground nuts. But it's, it's the same thing. And then they have what's called ground nut paste, which is like peanut butter, but they don't add any sugar. They don't add anything to it. They roast the, the ground nuts or the peanuts, then they grind it in a grinder, and then it comes out. Uh, it's not as thick as peanut butter. It's a little bit more watery than peanut butter, but it's virtually the same thing. And so they use it a lot with soups and stews and things. So they'll use that ground nut paste. And they have this food. It's called eto. That really means that your man really enjoyed our food. So from fufu to bangkun or bangkun to eto. Oh, nice. And it's they boil plantain and then they have these clay balls that they make. They're like homemade clay balls. And they have this grinder, it's a hand grinder. It looks like an hourglass, but it's just solid wood. And they grind the plantain in the clay bowl. Then they add the groundnut paste to it. And they'll add pepe, which is like red pepper. They put pepe in everything. Their food's really, really spicy. They put red pepe in everything. And so it sort of has like the bananas and peanut butter taste but not as good because it's plantains and ground nut paste. <laughs> and then they add hot pepper to it, so it's kind of spicy. It's really weird. They put pepe in everything. I don't know, so as you can tell, like the food's really different. 
they don't eat anything plain they have plain rice but they they even eat their rice differently than we do they have they have what's called stew it's mostly just like onions cabbage tomatoes things and sometimes it's really thick sometimes it's really watery and they just pour, pour it on top of plain rice sometimes you can also use you know um, light soup groundnut soup or maybe palm nut soup in eating our rice so it's not always you know eating our rice with stew but it could, it could be stew and you know soup no salt or anything and then they just eat it i think that's why they use a lot of pepe because they don't use they didn't use as much salt so they think that if there's no pepe if there's no spiciness in it then it doesn't taste like anything to them and so that's why they put pepper in everything everything even they have porridge with pepe in it <laughs>